Hello, this is Bohim from the cafe, back uh, with another tutorial. Uh, I was watching the new music video from uh, the Chemical Brothers, and I noticed a very cool effect that I'm that I tried to recreate in Cinema 4D, and uh, I thought I'd share with you how I did it. So let me just get the video for you, and you can see how it how I did it. So, this is the effect we are going to try to recreate. As you can see, there's a row of uh, particles or something that is moving, kind of syn synchronized, uh, at what looks like kind of a noise. So that's what we are going to try to recreate in Cinema 4D. So create a new scene and go up to MoGraph and create a cloner object. Uh, set the mode to grid array and the count to 140, 58 and 1. On the size you set 1000 and 770. Alright, uh, now we're just going to load in our object that is going to be cloned, in this case a pyramid. The size of the pyramid will be 2 by 2 by 2 meters. Just drop it under the cloner object and set the display to medium so that there won't be too many clones which will uh, really make it lag when you move around. Okay, go into materials and just uh, give it a green color create a new material, give it a green color doesn't really matter what color you choose, I'm going to go with green uh, remove the specular, go to glow and set the auto strength to 300 and the radius to 1.5 give it a bit of random let's see, 57% or something like that and just drop it onto the pyramid. There we go. Now we have this these rows of green pyramids. Okay. Uh, next, click the cloner object, go into MoGraph and create a shader effector. Since I had the cloner object selected when I chose the, mo the shader effector it automatically came into the effectors. Okay, so um, on the falloff of the shader effector, set it to box, go into top view, mm, let's see, for some reason it really began to like now. So, oh, there it is. Seems like it's not exactly centered, I'm just going to center it. Do the same with the shader effector. Alright. Select the shader effector and drag the yellow box just outside outer line of uh, particles and the red box just inside the last line of particles. So there's this line of particles or pyramids if you want that is not going to be affected. Oh wait, I just, uh, let's see, the yellow is going to be on the inside and the red right there. Okay same is going on over here and do the same with this side all right there we go um, go into perspective again just click O to get into the 
to auto zoom to what I have in my viewport. Okay, um, now go into materials, create a new material, and remove spiguler, and on color you give it a noise. Um, this is going to control the uh, movement of the particles, and I have found a noise that fits very good. So I'm going. Um, it's the sparse convolution, and uh, I have found that this noise uh, fits best. It looks most like uh, what we see in the video. Okay, uh, on a global scale, set it to two thousand percent. Animation speed to 1.5, cycles to 0.5, and uh, you also ha have to switch the colors. So just make the black white and the white black. Okay, mm, on the low clip, 0, high clip, 77%, and brightness, minus 6. Alright, that's uh, it. Just take the material and drop it on the shader effector. And on the shader effector, go into parameter, uncheck scale, check position, and we're going to control the Y, which is going to be 400 meters. And uh, yeah, just uh, let's see. Yeah, got a select on shading, select color, and drag the texture in here. I'm just gonna hide shader effector, it's a bit annoying. There you go. As you can see, all the uh, particles is now moving. Or it's not moving, but it has some sort of system to it. And if you play, it'll move around. Not sure if you can see that this because uh, it's a bit the particles is a bit sl small, so I'll just make them bigger. There we go. It's easier to see now. There we go. Uh, I'll just oh last thing create a camera. Check it and the coordinates set it to ninety. Zero, zero. Just gonna align it so that I can't see the last row of particles. There we go. Perhaps on the cloner object, we'll have to make it wider. So just do that and uh, make more counts. Oh wait, go into display and set uh, the level of detail to high. Okay, uh, I don't think we'll have to uh, create more clones. Just gonna uncheck the camera to see if everything is as it should. Oh, no. We have to... Uh, if you increase the size of the cloner object, we will also have to increase the fall off of the shader effector. So just, just go into display, set the level of detail to medium, go into top view by clicking F2, and uh, make the shader effector visible, and just drag the box out so that it fits it fits the new shape of the clone objects. Alright, F1 to get back into perspective check the camera. Uh, we're also going to have to get some uh, depth of field, so go into depth, depth set the front floor, check it, and uh, just drag this down here. Let's see. Yeah, front floor. Front floor is what we need. Okay, just drag it drag the front floor back to the edge of the uh, cloner objects and that's it check the camera 
go back to the pyramid and set the size back down to 2 if you set it to 4. Uh, go to display, level of detail, detail high, and on the cloner object we can set, we can check the render instances because that will render faster. Go into the render settings and on output we'll have, I'll render in HD. And we'll render, I'll render all frames, which is 90. I'll also render a multipass because I'm going to add the depth of field in post. So I'll render out an RGBA image and depth and a depth buffer. Anti-aliasing, uh, we don't need it. Object low, we need that, and we need we need the depth of the field. There we go. Uh, I'll save it as Photoshop. No, uh, I'll save it as OpenEXR. And I'll save it in a new folder, which I will call Green Effects. I'll just have to uncheck the multi-layer file checkbox and go back to open EXR. Let's see where is it. There it is. Okay. Um, that should be it. And it's oh wait. I have to uncheck depth of field. Or unless it will actually create the depth of field as a post effect, which we do not want. I want it I want to add it myself. Okay, and then it's just to render it. Let's see, I just want to make sure it's moving at the correct speed. Yeah, it's right. Okay, uh, I'll just start rendering it and come right back when it's done. Oops, I forgot to... I forgot to uh, set the level... Oh. Hmm. It was at high. Okay, perhaps up the count a bit to 69, perhaps even more, 80, there we go, and render. Okay, I'll just pause it and come back when it's done. Alright, uh, it's done rendering and I have loaded the uh, picture sequence into After Effects and uh, I'll just play and you can see how it looks. Yeah, uh, that looks pretty good. I messed up with uh, the depth buff buffer, so uh, there is no depth, but, uh, but um, I don't think we need that, because uh, it's looking pretty good. Um, you can just play around with uh, the settings, because you can use any noise that you want. So uh, there's a lot of stuff you can do with this. Yeah, so uh, thanks for watching this tutorial. And uh, I hope you learned something new. Goodbye.